Now, back to Battleground Toronto. And last week, or a little more over a week ago, when we heard Ward 16 Councillor and Toronto Transit Commission Chair Karen Stintz was planning to take a run at the mayor's job, well, of course, we want to talk to candidates. We asked her to come in the program. Today was the day we worked out. Boy, what a day we picked to have Karen on the program. She joins me from Toronto. Thank you so much for joining us. And I guess the, the, the first thing is, there's a, bit, there's a whole bunch of things I want to get to, but let's walk through the day. Yeah. The day starts with Doug Ford saying that the police chief in Toronto, not the mayor, but the police chief ought to resign. What did you make of that when you heard that? Yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was a very strange request coming from Councillor Ford. Um, asking for Bill Blair to resign and, uh, and and not really explaining what on earth the chief of police should step aside for. Um, only later in the day to, do, does the city learn that, in fact, it's Mayor Rob Ford who's been smoking crack cocaine and uh, the police has been, have been investigating that. And, and so you hear this admission, and it was the most strange admission I've ever heard. You know, ask me the question, ask me the question, Ford says, that yeah. he smoked crack cocaine. Um, tell me where you were. Were you in, in your office? Was council meeting? What, what was going on in your life when all of a sudden somebody went, Karen, you need to pay attention to this? <laughs> well, you know, to be honest with you, in the morning it was business as usual at City Hall. We had a committee meeting to, to determine how we were going to uh, get some governing work done. Then in the afternoon, I was advised that the mayor admitted to smoking crack cocaine. And then I was advised that he would be making another announcement. And there was general speculation on what he would say the second mm -hmm. time. But the second time, he said the same thing as he did the first time, which was that he smoked crack cocaine, which you know, I, I think is a, really is quite a betrayal to the people of the city and to his supporters. Because for the last six months, he's been denying that he has smoked, indeed smoked crack cocaine. And in fact, he has. He said, he's, and then that last announcement, it wasn't to resign or anything like that. Yeah. It was to say, I'm here, I love Toronto, and I want to get back to work, and I want to be on the ballot next October. You're going to be on the ballot next October. Is it easier to beat Rob Ford to, as a result of today's activities? Well, you know, Rob has, has said that he is going to change his behavior, and I think, that the, I think he needs to do that. I think he's left a void in the city that council will have to work to overcome. But the issues facing the city are the same. We have to deal with the gardener, we have budgetary challenges, we want to make sure we keep the tax rate low, we want to build transit, we want to make it easier for people to live here and work here and invest here. And those are the issues that are facing the city and those will be the issues that we will be talking about in 2014. We, we reported on a tweet by uh, my friend Jonathan Kay, the editorial board editor at the National Post. And yesterday he tweeted, as Uncle Irv was saying, if it's just Rob Ford between me and Olivia Chow, I'm voting for Rob Ford. In other words, there seems to be a hunger in the city for a, quote, small C conservative, mm -hmm. someone who is not Olivia Chow or somebody from the left, could be Adam Vaughn, who knows what. Yeah and that you might be that person. So for you is the task to convince Ford Nation that, hey, you can pick up on the things you liked about Rob Ford's policy, but you're not Rob Ford. Is that the challenge for you? Yes, that is, and, and I have a track record that speaks to a fiscal conservative agenda that since I've been elected in 2003, I have been fighting for, for smart investments of tax dollars, protecting the taxpayer, making sure the government is spending money smartly and wisely. That, um, you know, I live in the city like everybody else does, and I, you know, I know what the constraints are. But as we, keep to, as we fight to keep tax dollars down, we also need to build a city that's livable and that people want to be proud of. Let me ask you specifically about uh, Ms. Chow. As I was just saying a minute ago, uh, we were looking for her today on Parliament Hill. We couldn't find her, uh, but she did have that comment on Facebook when we had that Blair press conference. She seems to be teasing us that she may be making an announcement. I'm assuming you've got to be ready for that. Um, so if Libby Chow's in the race, what's your pitch to say, no, Olivia's not the right mayor uh, for Toronto right now? Well, and I, and I think really Jonathan Kay framed it, that Olivia Chow will be the mayor of the NDP. And she will be the left-leaning mayor for the people, for those in the city that want to, you know, go back to the David Miller years. And there are some in the city that will find her candidacy and her campaign attractive. But I think we have learned over, you know, since from 2003 to 2010 that that there are that's not the best course of action for the city. That we still need to keep our taxes down. That we can't let the unions take over the city. That we need to keep a hard stand. And all, and while we keep the taxes down, we need to also make smart investments. So I think Olivia Chow will be the NDP candidate if she chooses to run. And I, I don't think that will she will appeal to the broadest section of the city. Let me ask you a little timing question. I, I, we like inside baseball questions. You announced it, say, at the, at the sort of end of October there. Uh, is that, yeah, that's almost more than a year uh, that you'll be campaigning. Why be sort of one of the first out of the gate, one of the first leading candidates out of the gate? Uh, give, me, give me your sense on why you thought it was a, the appropriate time to make that choice. Well, there was a, a, quite a bit of speculation leading up to the 2014 campaign. 
And I wanted people to know that I was committed and I'm serious and I'm going to be on the ballot because I believe in a better Toronto. And I believe I can be the mayor that will bring Toronto together and continue to invest in the city that we love. Um, last question then. So tomorrow people wake up, they'll shake their heads and go, oh my gosh, I wasn't dreaming what I heard yesterday from the mayor. They'll read the front pages of the paper. What is council going to do tomorrow? What do you, what, where is there some procedures here to, I don't know, move the mayor out of his job? No, uh, the mayor has chosen to stay in his role and council needs to now figure out how we can step up and fill the void that has been created by the fact that the mayor has admitted to smoking crack cocaine and we will continue the work of the city. We have a council meeting coming up. We have a budget that we need to pass. We have the TTC that needs to run, the police that uh, need a budget passed as well. So can't, I'm confident in my colleagues that we will continue to step up and do the business of the city and serve the 2.7 million residents who live here. Well, Karen Stintz, good luck in your Thank race you. for mayor. And uh, hopefully we'll have you back on the program as uh, what we thought was going to be an interesting race. Anyhow, now it's really interesting. <laughs> Thanks again. I look forward to it. Bye.